After including our libraries and implementing our main function, the next thing we will need is a variable to collect the input from the user. We will call it int number. Okay, then after prompting the user for the number, we will implement our solution with the scanf function. Another interesting feature with the scanf function is that it allows you to specify how many digits you can take from the user. In our case, we only want to check if the first two digits are even. So we can make sure to collect only the first two digits by including the number in the format specifier for an integer D in the scanf function. Now, it does not have to be just the first two digits. It can be any amount that you want. Depending on what you have to do in your program, I thought this would be a good skill to keep in your code and arsenal. Okay, this works when collecting input from a file as well. So keep this in mind because we will cover files in a later episode. After we collect the first two digits, we can just implement a way to find out if it's even. Here, we will mod the number with two. If the answer is zero, that means that the first two numbers are even. If it is one, then it has to be odd. Since we will be using an if statement, we would want to switch up where we place our output statements. Remember that zero means false. So if the number is even, we will put the answer in the else clause. And if it is odd, we will put it in the if clause. Or we could just place a not operator in the if statement to keep everything consistent with normal logic. But we will just stick with the first option. After declaring the variables day, month, and year, we will prompt the user for his or her birthday. Notice the specified format in which we want the date of birth. This will essentially be the key component in this video. This video is meant to show you the different ways in which you can receive input from the scanf function. We all know you can receive multiple inputs from a single scanf function, but you can also specify the format in which the input can be received. In this case, we want the user to include a slash after entering in the month and the day of their birthday. Making sure to specify that in our scanf function and with our prompt makes it more seamless and is in fact the proper way to implement this technique. If the user puts in a dash instead of a slash, the program will spit out undesirable results. This is because the specified format in the scanf function allows the program to correctly ignore the extra characters coming into the input stream and properly assign the values into its appropriate variables. In the case of a mistake and a dash is inputted instead of a slash, the program takes the integer value of the character and uses it in our calculation. After properly taking in the user input, we will then implement a way to calculate the date of birth. The way we will do this is to obviously check the month and the day with the current date to make sure everything is correct. I chose to hard code the current date into the program because the focus of the video is focusing on the formatting of the scanf function. It goes without saying that we expect the user to enter in the correct values of the day, month and year whenever they use this program. For example, if a user enters in 99 for the month or even a year, our program will give undesirable results. The same will happen if they enter in a character instead of a number. This can be fixed with the form of input validation. So in order to validate that an integer has been entered, we will use the scanf functions to do that. The scanf function, believe it or not, returns a value. And the value it returns is how many successful values it has been able to pass into its appropriate variable. Remember that with the scanf function, we specify what kind of value we will be expecting and then pass that value into its appropriate variable. If this is done correctly, the scanf returns one for that particular passing, and it does that for every successful passing it completes. So in our case, if a user enters in a character instead of a number, in any of our variables, the scanf will return a value less than three. We expect three because we have three integer variables 
we are working with, and any number other than 3 shows that something is wrong and we will print out an error. The next part of the input validation process is to validate when a user enters in a value greater than 12 for the month or a value greater than 31 for the day. Again, we expect them to enter in the correct value and this will be just a check to make sure that nothing outrageous is entered. We can make the program foolproof by validating if the day exists for that month and so on, but this will make this minor demonstration unnecessarily long. If you wish to foolproof the program, please go ahead. Nonetheless, validating the day and the month will be easy to do once they enter in the correct values for the input. Just compare them with an if statement. Once everything is correct, the age can then be calculated. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be sure to answer them in the comments down below. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if this video helped you in any way. Thank you. After you include the appropriate libraries, of course the next thing to do is create your main function. With this program, we will essentially need two things from the user, a base and a height of a triangle so we can calculate its area. Typically, what you would want to do is create two input variables and an answer variable. So essentially a base, height, and area variable that will help us solve this problem. For this problem, we will do something different. Instead of creating our usual three variables and passing values into them via the scanf function or with expressions, we will utilize the idea of variables to our advantage. A variable is essentially an empty bucket that can hold information. If we declare an int variable, the int specifies how big the bucket or variable will be, or in other words, how much information the bucket can successfully hold. Similar to a bucket, you can fill it up and dump its contents into another bucket, which will allow you to use the bucket over and over again. Having said that, here is what we will do for this program. We will declare one variable and call it input, and another variable called answer. First, we will ask for the base of the triangle. After that, we will solve the first part of the equation. The equation for finding the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So after receiving the base, we will simply multiply by one half and set it to the answer vari variable. After that, we will prompt the user again and ask for the height, which we will then multiply by a previous answer to get the area. After testing the program, we can see that it works. Notice that for this style of programming, it does not allow you to collect more than two inputs at a time. Although you minimize the number of variables you use in your program, the trade-off is that you have to do everything step by step. Having said that, it does not mean that what we did is wrong. It's all about what your code has to do. For our purposes, the way we approached it was fine. So the first thing we'll do is prompt the user for the temperature input. And we will do so with the printf statement. The printf statement is in the stdio library, which we included at the top of the code. This hashtag include allows you to include the library, which hold functions that can be used in your program. This library typically has a lot of functions, but for today, we will only need the printf functions and the scanf functions for our purpose. But before we do that, we typically want a few variables to store information in. So think about variables as buckets of memory you can allocate or reserve on your computer to use for your programming. In order to process information, you need to hold on to it, right? So yeah, for this problem, I have chosen to use two variables. And I chose them to be doubles because it allows for us to get the temperature values in decimal form. 
So we're going to make two variables, one for the temperature in Celsius and the other for the temperature in Fahrenheit. It doesn't matter what you call it, but typically make sure it makes sense and it doesn't contain any special characters or start with a number because C does not like those formats and it will t throw you a syntax error if you do so. After we have included what we will want the user to see, we need, to, we need a way to receive that information. That is where our scanf function comes in. What this function does is receive input from the user from the keyboard and stores them in a variable. There are other functions such as the fscanf functions that can receive input from a file and we will cover those in a future video. But for now, all we need is a normal scanf function. Okay, now we have the temperatures uh, in Celsius stored in the temp variable. We now have to calculate the temperature in Fahrenheit and we will do so with a handy equation that converts a given temperature to Fahrenheit. No, notice how we set the solution to the answer variable. So what we are doing again is storing information into a space and memory that we can process later on. And the process will now just be to print out the temperature back out to the user in Fahrenheit. And that is, that is it. So typically you would want to check for errors whether in spelling or anything like that, any syntax error, meaning that if you misspelled print F or scan F or even forgot to put a semicolon, um, usually the program doesn't run and an error is given. But I believe that our program is good and will be able to run successfully. So we are good.